Hi, everyone. There we go. We've got you joined now. Um, I'm going to be handing over to James Knott of BGL Partners, who are chartered surveyors. He's going to be hosting today's webinar. If you do at any point have any questions, you're welcome to pop them in the chat or speak out loud and, and James will definitely be able to help. Uh, but for now, James, I will hand over to you. That's super. Um, thank you for, for those that have um, decided to opt for the, um, the, the live talk and uh, welcome to anyone that might view this uh, at a later stage of the recording. It's great to be able to speak on this subject. Um, there's no doubt that, that this property tax is a major overhead or fixed cost for, for occupiers. Um, I often joke that um, when I give a presentation that it, it kind of comes with a, almost a warning that it might cause uh, some drowsiness. It's quite a dry subject. Um, I sincerely hope that I can kind of make this one practical, thought-provoking, uh, and most of all, informative. Um, we're in a, a sort of a, a, a new era of, of business rates. Uh, the previous government had made some changes. We're now into three yearly cycles of revaluations. And uh, we're just over the halfway point of the, of the current three year uh, cycle, the 2023 revaluation period. Um, so uh, essentially, I'll uh, go on to the next slide. Um, the things that I kind of wanted to give an overview of as part of this introduction, uh, the most important question to ask, uh, we'll cover that. And the slightly odd second bullet, rateable value and rateable rate liability, pleasure or pain, in, in many ways, that we're going to cover the sort of answer to asking the question about this property tax and the practical ways of how one can reduce the rateable value, the sorts of angles to consider, or what we would consider as, as rating surveyors. Um, and and the, the pleasure or pain, if you've been tasked with responsibility for property matters or looking into this property tax, uh, one has to be very careful of how one goes about it. Um, there are often angles that, that can be explored to save money on this property tax, but equally assessments can go up as, as well as down. So the decisions you make in terms of who you seek advice from are very important, but we'll, we'll cover those. Uh, it also, given that there was a recent uh, budget um, to, to cover the few areas that were covered in a, in a, on business rates matters, and, and the future of this property tax, given that the, the new government had said they were going to abolish it, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. And also, uh, again, a more practical thing of what we would typically go through as part of the check challenge appeal process, what's involved, and at the end, any questions um, that you might have, albeit if any come up during, I'm happy to answer them. Um, so on to the most important question. And I would say, if you're tasked with this, uh, this area of responsibility uh, for your company or organization, it's this question. Uh, is the current assessment that's applied to your space too high, too low, or about right? Um, I think it, it's a major cost, so therefore I think it's it's a good question to ask and consider. Um, and it helps to know what a rateable value is and who sets it. So uh, for this current three-year cycle, the rateable value that you're paying on or your assessment, rateable value and assessment, they're one and the same, uh, is based on the valuation officer's assumed open market rental value of your space as if it was on the market as at the 1st of April 2021. So we're talking about uh, an historic rental valuation date. Uh, essentially, the valuation officer is valuing it as what someone would reasonably expect to pay as the annual rent um, at that date. 
but it's an interesting day, April 2021. Um, the property market, the rental market was definitely affected by uh, post-pandemic market. So it, it was not a, an easy valuation date to, uh, on which to, you know, for the VO to, to deal with. Um, and so therefore, even more reason to ask that question. Uh, I've also alluded to the fact that uh, because we're on three yearly cycles, we're uh, also beginning to uh, think ahead to the 2026 rating evaluation. Um, and we're already past the valuation date uh, on which the, the assessments, the 2026 assessments will be based, that being the 1st of April 2024. So uh, these things will come around very quickly now. On to the more practical uh, issues of, associated with that question. Uh, forgive me for jumping up and down with these screens. Um, I thought it might be helpful to look at a summary valuation report. Each rating assessment um, uh, will have a rateable value. Um, for most property types, um, there will be a, a, a rental valuation date and a summary valuation report, which if you haven't seen this before, you can obtain for your property from the VOA uh, website. You could search on your postcode and it wouldn't look like this. This is one of our reports that we get from a, a different part of software. But essentially there are, are three main components. The uh, the unadjusted rate, any uplifts that have been applied, which might relate to air, con air con systems, whether there's raised flooring, those sorts of things. Uh, so in this case, it's uh, the valuation officer has valued this office at 475 pounds a square meter, and then uplifted it for a reason by 5%. Um, and the other main component part is the floor area, how much space the, the valuation officer believes you occupy, and that gives the rateable value. Um, I'll come on later to how we go through the check challenge process, but each of these component parts uh, are part of the review as to whether the assessment is too high, too low, or about right. Um, so that's the, the, the assessment itself, um, but there's more to, re to reducing the rate liability than just whether the rateable value is correct or not. So I thought it might be helpful to cover the different types of reliefs that are, are available. So the rateable value is set by the valuation office agency, but the reliefs uh, are determined by the billing authority or the local council. Um, so if I go in the right direction, uh, there are different flavors of relief. There are some that are discretionary and some that are mandatory. So some examples of discretionary relief could be um, on the left hand side, you can see uh, an office plan and in the shaded red section, this is an example of a company that uh, aren't utilizing all of their space. Uh, and it is possible, uh, albeit it's subject to the discretion of the, the billing authority as to whether they would allow you to get relief for a period of either three or six months on the underutilized parts that would need to be cleared of any furniture uh, or any items. But but sometimes it can be practical to, to do that sort of thing. It can also apply the sort of relief when one is undergoing a refurbishment of part of the space or all of the space. Um, and it, it, it can be a bit grey as to the extent of, of refurbishment. Sometimes companies will completely vacate the space and uh, there could be angles to delete the assessment depending on whether it's taken back to Shell and Corp. But uh, I recently visited a client to get, uh, to get an update on, uh, or to give them an update on progress of their action. And we noticed that they were refurbing their uh, um, 
entry section and, and reception area. And we then went down this process of, uh, of seeking relief for the parts that were being uh, refurbished. So practical ways of consider things that you should consider if you haven't already done so via a professional advisor to reduce your liability. Um, the next sort of relief is mandatory, and this would typically apply to an empty office or an office undergoing uh, a, a major fit out. Um, now, empty rates again is is subject to one the property being completely empty and uh, two there are limitations uh, again it's three months or six months um, three months would apply to uh, anything that's not industrial so offices retail and six months would be to an industrial classification uh, it's also worth bearing in mind that if you move into a property that's empty and the previous occupier has utilised that uh, empty rates period, then that might not be available to you. So these things are worth bearing in mind when you're considering uh, taking on new or additional space. Uh, and one has to have a, a, an empty rates game plan or a game plan really in any, any rates mitigation activity one under, undergoes. Um, I move on to uh, a different sort of uh, um, uh, approach, and, and this is uh, to do with external issues, albeit it, it could apply internally as well to your building, but temporary allowances. Certainly in central London, uh, there is so much redevelopment going on. And the, the picture on the left-hand side shows a very kind of typical example of uh, some major redevelopments that are going on. Um, if you are a party wall to facing uh, or kind of restricted by a, a major road scheme that's going on. As long as it's for at least three months, then one can take additional action by the check challenge process to seek an allowance uh, to reflect the nuisances being caused. Uh, essentially, if you, if you don't take action, then you, uh, you, you're unlikely to get this relief applied to you by the Valuation Office Agency. But again, I thought I'd show you some practical examples um, of, of the sort of things that, that companies should be considering. These tend to be more obvious, but it, it could also apply to a scenario where the floor above you or below you is undergoing a, a, a major refurbishment. And um, you know, e each scenario requires um, consideration and uh, the submission in a timely fashion of, of a, what is called a material change of circumstances submission. Uh, now, one of the, the more practical aspects is uh, if you've, whether you've taken the step of appointing or seeking professional guidance from a rating surveyor. Not all firms of charter surveyors undertake or get involved in rates mitigation advice. But um, if you haven't taken this sensible step, then it's been pretty obvious to me that there are a number of companies, so called rating consultants or advisors, that aren't professional, i.e., they're not members of uh, or regulated by the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors. They don't have chartered surveyors working for them. Um, and they're not members of the IRRB or RSA, the Rating Surveyors Association. So essentially, you know, there are both um, firms of uh, rating surveyors, legitimate firms and dubious firms that will make a, approaches to you. Um, I would say the difference between uh, the professional firms and the non-professional firms is often to do with the sort of promises that are made. Um, and I, I mean, I've, I've used one of my favorite Larson cartoons to show, to show you that, that sometimes 
if someone is saying we can reduce your rates and, and they they're saying it having without any regard to looking at the internal makeup of your space then I would be uh, particularly careful before embarking or engaging with them. I mean, as some of you may know, uh, BGL partners are the uh, um, are the partner to uh, members of the uh, the OMG on rating matters. I would always be happy to assist and offer guidance, informal guidance. In terms of uh, that question that I posed, is your is your assessment too high, too low, or that right, or any other circumstances that you might be encountering if you don't have a firm of surveyors on board? Alternatively, you know, if 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 um, you've been tasked with uh, solving this issue and, and at this kind of stage of the 2023 revaluation cycle, you haven't considered this question or gone down the route of appointing a, a specialist rating surveyor, then, you know, it, it could be go to the agent that put you in the space or seek uh, recommendations from your accountancy firm or your legal advisor, those sorts of things. I wanted to bring some balance to, to where you can get advice on, on this subject. Um, but the, the key thing is, that, and I want to reiterate that, just be very careful of the sort of responses you get. Some of them sound very plausible, but they don't offer integrity uh, or any, sometimes any truth to what, what is being uh, portrayed or put across to you. Equally, um, for us as rating surveyors, if we're acting for a company who might occupy a floor in a building, sometimes the only way to know who is acting for whom you know, the other firm of professionals involved in rates mitigation action for the occupiers is to speak or contact the, the occupiers uh, to find out who is acting for whom. So, you know, liaison on this sort of thing is very important so that there is a, a common approach. Um, back on to the recent... Um, uh, budget announcements that, that were covered uh, by the new chancellor. Uh, the, the key announcements uh, relates to the multiplier. So it's rateable value times multiplier, in theory, gives your liability. Um, and that is subject to supplements. If you're in London, uh, there would be uh, the potential of having a cross-rail supplement applied to your liability. And there is an additional supplement if you're in the City of London. Um, and the, the, the key piece of news is that if you're a, a small property multiplier, if your rateable value is below 51,000, then the multiplier has, uh, continues to be frozen at um, 49.9 pence. Uh, that's been the same for the past couple of years, quite a few years, uh, and that's the, the, definitely the right decision. Uh, frustratingly, for, for large properties, uh, larger companies, uh, the Chancellor decided to increase the, uh, the multiplier uh, by the CPI, the inflation rate, at the September uh, before the April, so the CPI in September, the official rate was 1.7%. So there is going to be an increase in, in the multiplier for next September. Um, if you happen to be um, a company that is uh, in the retail hospitality or leisure sectors and are receiving this relief, um, there are many uh, in the industry who felt that um, it should uh, remain uh, at 75%. Uh, unfortunately, the government of, uh, are, are reducing the relief, the amount of relief available down to 40%, uh, subject to a cap of £110,000 for organisation, again, from, from next April, uh, 25, 26 rate year. And there are or is um, 
uh, a new document, a new consultation document or discussion document that has been released by the government for transforming business rates. Uh, what we do know is that there will be the introduction of, of different multipliers, lower multipliers for any businesses in the retail, hospitality or leisure sectors. At this stage, we don't know too much about it, but um, uh, given that uh, we were expecting some radical changes to the, to the business rate system, uh, in reality, not much is changing in terms of uh, you know, how the rateable value is calculated and um, the fact that it is still a, a major cost. Um, we were expecting some, some radical changes by the government and it doesn't look like that that is going to happen. One piece of, I think, really good news for rate payers, some of, some of you may have read or heard that there was... Um, going to be the introduction of a duty to notify reporting provision for rate payers, which would have meant an annual return uh, for all uh, rate payers uh, being introduced. We were expecting it to take place over this current three-year cycle. It would have added to the administrative burden associated with this property tax. Uh, but the good news is the government of... Uh, of um, decided that the, uh, the resources that are needed to introduce this sort of reporting criteria, um, probably due to an under-resourced valuation of this agency and, and not having the technology to, in place to, to be able to, to, to do so, it, it's now going to be phased in over the next three years cycle. Now, I, I thought it... Uh, kind of partly stirred on why Hannah recommended that I introduce this additional slide, is that I thought I'd give you an insight into, or an overview, on what we as a firm of chance surveyors do when it comes to the, the check challenge appeal process. Um, initial due diligence is crucial, i.e. prior to any action uh, one would need to undertake a measured survey for rating purposes. Uh, I have to find that our measured surveys are different to maybe what the, uh, the occupier believes they have, which could have been down to the original letting details that they had when they moved in. Uh, and sometimes there could be discounts or uh, areas that are devalued that, that we would view differently from a rating uh, perspective than, than the occupier or the, the details that they believe they have about their space. So that's a really crucial thing and ties back with the summary valuation report and what the valuation of this agency has. Clearly, if our measured survey identifies uh, that, that our area is lower than the amount of space that the valuation officer has for your, your property, then that would be one point uh, for taking rates mitigation action. Equally, if, if one has, um, if one measures and, and identifies that there is kind of more space than is shown on the, the VO's records, then it could be a sign that, um, you know, to take no action. Uh, and as things currently stand, the onus is still technically on the valuation of this agency to find out uh, about uh, the, the difference. Um, and so, you know, when it comes to uh, the question that is it too high, too low, or about right, then in theory, one might need to accrue for uh, a different liability. Um, that, that could be true of um, other factors. Uh, we, we often find times when things like uh, the air con hasn't been reflected or uh, race flooring, various other factors that, that we would consider as part of this uh, measured survey to look at the specification of the property, the, the quality, even the external environment sometimes. Uh, the other thing is, is rental evidence. Uh, and back to this, uh, this valuation date of the 1st of April 2020, 
2021 for the current three year cycle. Um, so rental evidence in terms of the letting for the occupied space that we're dealing with uh, and analysing the rental evidence, how close it might be to, to 1st of April 21. Also other evidence in the same building or on the same industrial estate. And one could extend that and often would consider um, the valuation scheme. So the valuation of this agency will, will group properties together into schemes. Uh, and, and so sometimes we will consider rental evidence in a, in a wider context. Um, the other thing is, you know, checking, checking the facts. That is a, 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 such an important point. And the, the, the check process is fundamentally to, to ensure that, that any factual information, particularly if it's in a mitigation capacity, so floor areas would often be dealt with and should be dealt with at the check stage of the process. Um, anything relating to um, a reduction in the valuation basis, that would be something that the valuation office agency will typically only discuss at the challenge stage. And the challenge will involve a, a far more detailed submission uh, presenting the evidence to the valuation officer in terms of um, uh, the, the nature of the space, photographs, detailed survey, uh, and, and putting the evidence forward. Uh, and uh, this is a very kind of uh, basic overview, but the appeal stage is only usually reached if uh, at the end of the challenge process, uh, effectively, there's no negotiated settlement uh, where the valuation officer won't accept uh, the, the, the challenge case. Then the option is to take it uh, to the appeal stage and then possibly beyond to the valuation tribunal. Um, and there is now a cost to progress to the appeal stage of £300. But importantly, this is refundable uh, at, at the kind of the outcome in the event of a successful uh, 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 appeal. And, um, you know, one can get to the challenge stage and then take a view uh, with the client to determine kind of if that is something that is, uh, if they want to progress to, and, and understanding the reasons for the case and the merits for doing so. Um, I've probably got to the stage where um, I, I hope I've gone, uh, kind of covered the, the subject with enough depth, but not too much, not oversimplified, but not to uh, bore the hell out of you. Uh, are there any questions uh, at this stage of the talk? Clearly, if anything kind of bubbles up or any thoughts come afterwards, then I'm more than happy to receive an email or a call and provide informal advice on uh, in relation to that question. Just so I jump on, because I can see we've got a question in the chat, James. <laughs> so what proportion of challenges get accepted in your opinion is the question we've had come up. I, I, I don't know the official figures. Uh, all I do know is that uh, it, it's about whether they're successful or not. Uh, like I say, the honest, the honest question is, I don't know. Sometimes a challenge, it, it's about the quality of the challenge that, that is the key. Um, and we've definitely had situations where the challenge itself uh, has, has not been accepted by the 
the valuation officer, and we've gone to the appeal stage or tribunal stage, and and um, we've had a successful outcome. Um, it, it, whilst the, the valuation office agency have a duty to maintain the rating list fairly, there are times when uh, I would say it's, it's almost uh, illogical, some of the arguments that are put forward by the VO um, in relation to the actual cases we put forward. Um, but in all honesty, I don't know the answer to the success rate. All I do know is that the vast majority of the challenges we put forward lead to uh, a positive outcome. Um, but one has to, to, to take a view, uh, and I would say we wouldn't usually recommend going to the challenge stage unless there was a, a, a reasonable chance of, uh, of reaching a, a positive outcome based on the evidence that, that we had, uh, had, had analysed at the kind of initial review stage. But, but yeah, I, I would say that um, uh, each case needs to be reviewed, and it sounds like a kind of a politician answering the question, but there, I, I would say the vast majority uh, would be successful, but it still comes down to uh, uh, cases where we definitely need to progress beyond the challenge stage to the appeal stage, and often, uh, often that's when uh, one gets a, a, a more meaningful outcome uh, to the CCA process. Okay, perfect. Oh, we've had another question come up. Uh, do you recommend that everyone looks at their business rates? Definitely. I, I mean, it, it, because it is such a major cost, um, I think e even knowing, you know, or establishing, you know, whether uh, it's there or thereabouts, uh, so we definitely looked at situations, looked at the amount of space or the spec of the space, looked at the valuation basis, uh, and, and said, look, you know, in our opinion, it, it's about right, the evidence supports it, uh, or equally, there are times when if one was to go through the, uh, the appeals process, one could risk putting the assessment up. I usually where the valuation office have, have missed something, they haven't reflected something in the assessment. Um, so assessments can go up as well as down, and there are definitely times we would say, look, you know, if you were to progress action, your assessment will go up. And I think knowing whether there's scope to reduce it or there's a risk of it going up, I think that's a really important question. It is, a, it is possible that the valuation office agency will also pick up on, uh, on the reason for the increase. Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not. And, and back to this issue of duty to notify, um, that is the sort of thing where there are times when if it had been introduced, uh, we would have got to the stage of, of where the rate payer would have needed to, to fess up, i.e. to say that we've got more space than uh, you're aware of, or, you know, our modifications, we've, uh, we've installed aircon, that's not reflected in our basis, um, you know, it, it, it happens. But I, I would say it, it's a really important question to know if, back to this question, is your liability or assessment too high, too low, or about right? Yeah, it, it's it's property tax. If it can be reduced, it should be. If you uh, understand that it could go up, I think that's important information to know as well, and, and what sort of level it would go up to. Perfect. Thank you. I've had another question pop up. Uh, do we know if the Crossrail BRS multiplier is also changing for twenty five slash twenty six? Uh, unfortunately, Crossrail will continue at the two pence per, 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 in the pound uh, rate. Um, a lot of people have said, well, when, when does it stop? But uh, as things currently stand, uh, if you're in a London borough and your rateable value is of a certain level, um, then you will have to pay the Crossrail supplement. 
So uh, unfortunately, uh, as with a lot of things, uh, it's, a, it's a supplement and a cost that will continue uh, for the foreseeable future, and I suspect into the next revaluation period too. Amazing, thank you. I'm not sure if anyone else has got any questions, if they want to pop them on the chat. Otherwise, uh, James is on Slack, um, or we can, he's got his website on the screen, as you can see, if you wanted to reach out to James directly. Ah, even better, perfect, thank you, James. So you can see the information on this page if anyone's got any questions or are after any more details, if you want to contact James using the details on the screen, or as I mentioned, he is also on Slack if you wanted to reach him on there. And I think, I'll just wait because it did say that someone's typing. Nope, we're all good. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, James. And thank you everyone for joining. And we will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Very kind. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.